Hi, and welcome to Where Are They Now? I am your host, Heather Lindstad, class of 1985. And I am so excited to bring in somebody I think that's pretty famous, Lance Wilder from the class of 1986. Lance from California, how are you doing today? Doing fine. We're actually having a hot Southern California day. We haven't <laughs> had one in a while. It's like in the 90s for three days. So. <laughs> okay. Well, out here in New England, we're still battling lots of rain and cold weather. So, um, so, but welcome and uh, glad glad you've been able to find time. I know you're super busy with it, with everything that you do, but um, we certainly appreciate you being on where they now. Um, so, again, the. Um, Take it, take me back. Um, I, when I talk to artists and it's one of those things that I'd love to say I'm creative, but I'm not. Um, when you started even in, in grade school and you know, you, you were in Chelmsford your whole life, like, did you know you were going to be an artist even though you were doing other things? And, and the community of Chelmsford is obviously very active, but did you have some kind of inkling? Yeah, I did. I, I actually don't remember a time in my life where I wasn't drawing. My mom reminds me that, uh, you know, I'd sit down, I loved watching cartoons and things, you know, Looney Tunes and Disney stuff growing up. And um, so she's like, well, I'll give them some paper and crayons and pencils and pens. And I think I was probably two years old, could have been a little yes. And I liked doing it. I just thought it was fun. And I loved the characters or backgrounds and sets. So I, I have, I've never remembered a time where I wasn't drawing and coloring and enjoying sort of becoming an artist, I guess. Now, did that come from your family? I mean, your mom, mom could grab your crayons and stuff like that, but is it something that is in your family, your parents or anybody that kind of um, inspired you either, or was it just you? Well, I, I think my family inspired me in ways where, first of all, they, we always went to see the animated Disney movies and let me watch Looney Tunes and cartoons. It wasn't just, oh, don't waste your time with that stuff. You know, it's not that I sat there all the time doing it. We were outdoors yeah. playing and everything, but yeah. I always really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed great television comedies and films and things like that. And so did my parents and my family. And um, I had a great aunt um, who was an amazing painter. She was involved with the Chelmsford Art Society and that for many years. She's not a blood relative, but that was an influence. And I remember, um, even as a kid, we'd go on family trips. And I remember, you know, going to like Norman Rockwell's house and museum. And I'm a huge Norman Rockwell fan. I love the idea about telling stories with pictures, which is, yep. I, I love children's books and things like that, where it's very visual. And animation I found is very similar. It's just, instead of having a 32 page book at the end, that's telling a story, it, the characters are moving and there's a whole team of people telling a story or a comedy or whatever. Um, so the process, the, ste the steps are kind of the same. And I just always enjoyed that growing up, even through grade school and, and reading like a lot of the Encyclopedia Brown books and mysteries, like you were involved in figuring stuff out. And being an illustrator is trying to figure out how to communicate visually. And hopefully everybody's doing their job, for instance, with The Simpsons, you get a script and everybody's doing their job to communicate the action, the emotion, the comedy. And uh, you know, my main job in the design department is obviously creating all the backgrounds, Springfield, the world they live in, the signs, the things on the walls, and coming up with that, whatever the writers write. So, well, speaking of walls, um, you know, you did a mural in at CHS, and was that like your vision, or was that? And I know there's great art teachers such as um, Mr. Hoover, and I'm sure you're gonna speak of highly of him, but when you thought about the mural, was that kind of you telling a story or, or how did that come about when you were at, at Chelmsford? Well, I can't give enough credit to uh, Eric Hoover and Paula Brown, uh, Ms. Brown. Um, the two of them are tremendous and I'm not the only one that says that. We had right. many, many friends and people over the years, they were just incredible. It was like having three or four years of a college course before we got to college. And one of the programs going on at Chelmsford High School, actually before I even got there, I'm not sure when it started, maybe the late seventies through the eighties was a mural program. There were a lot of big cinder block walls at CHS that are kind of bland and boring. Yeah. And um, so that had already started. And um, one of my really close friends, Susan Unger, she and I paired up because that was a huge wall 
between the cafeterias, if you've ever been to CHS. And uh, some people paired up and some people did their own on a smaller wall, but we got to choose the whichever, there was a list of walls available. And so Susan and I, we were able to choose the one between the uh, 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 cafeterias and we felt like, well, why not do something to do with food? So let's do a Paris cafe, a Paris street scene with, with a cafe. And um, that's what we did. That was just part of the program, the, the two or three years that we did that. And I ended up finishing that the summer after I graduated. We took oh. turns going in when we oh. weren't working and finished, I think, probably July or August of 86 before yeah. we went off to Rhode Island School of Design. So um, yeah. it was really cool. But when, so when you were doing those kind of projects at, at, at Chelmsford and, and taking those classes was, it had to be also other teachers though that were inspiring to say like, okay, it seems like this is your path, Lance, you're, you're going into the art, but um, let, were there others that tried to just inspire you to continue with the success in, in different ways? Yeah, I think uh, any of the teachers that knew me, I know like Mr. Jeff Doherty, I had him for two years in English. And I really liked him. Um, he was big reading and was a very enthusiastic teacher. You know, the class wasn't boring. Um, it, very involved. You know, the, the students, we all had a good time and we were learning. Um, but I think especially as I went on to junior and senior year of art school, um, I was in the, um, the advanced, the advanced art where we, what we were doing is putting a portfolio together to get into college and entering art shows and things like that to gain that experience. And that ended up taking um, a lot of our time, especially junior and senior year. I mean, I worked part-time. I, I loved baseball and basketball a little bit. I was never that good, but it was fun playing with my friends and getting yep. exercise and stuff. Don't get a lot of exercise sitting in a chair 50 or 60 hours a week. <laughs> but my hands, my hands are, are great. But, um, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of my friends and family had just kind of always known that I loved to draw. And, and I, I guess I have a sense of humor. I loved a lot of the great comedies and dramedies growing up um, that, I, that had an impact on me. I mean, I loved Looney Tunes for the silliness and crazy creativity of it, but I also really loved Disney for the, the beautiful theatrical artwork and the drama and stuff like that. It kind of, it was sort of both. So it's just so strange, the timing just happened to fall into place in the late eighties that animation was coming back. And um, the Simpsons was part of that comeback along with Roger Rabbit and the original family dog. And Disney decided to start doing things old school like the little mermaid. It turned everything around and suddenly people were interested in doing television and film production, right, right toward 1988, 89 and 90 when I was um, you know, getting into my senior year at RISD, so. So yeah, as you were building your portfolio and, and you've talked about it a little bit here is, and even on the Simpsons, but you're putting yourself out there and what is that like? And you know what I mean? And I, I will talk about what, what's behind me, but when you do something like that, like do you take deep breath? Like how is that when you 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 put something out there? Cause it, it's all about presenting yourself without words. Yeah. Um... It can be a little nerve wracking. I remember going into Boston for some of the big art shows, a lot of different schools, a lot of the best, you know, guys and girls, uh, you know, putting out all kinds of artwork. Um, you know, I, I mainly, since I was a kid, I love working in pencil and pen and ink. I joke with my parents, that's probably because we didn't get a color TV until I was in junior high school. So I feel like black and white, I, I always love that. I mean, I do love color, obviously, and Norman Rockwell's beautiful paintings and all this stuff. But I, I was always really into, into detail and putting a lot of things into my artwork. And um, yeah, I don't want this to sound wrong. I think I had, I didn't have a confidence about a lot of things, but I think I had a pretty good, not a cockiness, but a confidence that I loved what I did and often it didn't come out right and I'd have to rework it. It's a learning process to grow as an artist. Yeah. But I think I was reaching a point where um, my family and friends were pretty uh, constructively critical with me. Like if they loved something or like, oh, you could do this or maybe you could have done that or whatever. And I appreciated that. I appreciated that people cared about what I was doing or what I wanted to do when I went into a, had an idea or a project to do, um, including the, the teachers and my friends at you know, Chelmsford High School. 
and we kind of pushed each other. You know, it was it was great being in a class um, of a lot of talented people. You know, I, I actually love that. I tell my my kids that I'd I'd rather be kind of the one of the least talented people in an amazing group of people then you know you draw everything and everybody's like wow that's amazing like you know that's incredible like kind of like oh you're the best or one of the best I just it's it's good to be pushed creatively you know you know I love music as well and and my boys are into music and and I've often told them that to to really don't don't worry about doing it wrong do it because you love it and and just go for it you know really like whatever it takes Fig- it's a figuring out process, you know? Well, as you said, like the art world was changing for you and the animation and things like that. So I, I really think though, you're lucky that you had that support behind you that said, hey, follow your passion. Is yeah. that, would you you say that? And and that's, and obviously um, going off to RISD was kind of that that same dream, right? Yeah, it was, it was a huge help. My, my family, my grandparents, aunts and uncles, my friends were always, supportive and encouraging and, and loved what I was doing and looked forward to seeing what I was doing like when I come home at Christmas and bring the stuff I've been working on to show people and ask what they thought of it um, you know what they liked what they didn't like maybe or if they had any ideas I would listen to them and um, it just um, I, I don't want to jump ahead or get off the path here but it, but it was really I mean the, the timing of it all um, I did take some film and video and animation classes while at RISD on the side. We had an opportunity to do that. And I loved working with the sound and hooking it up to the animation. Some of it was 3D clay animation. Some of it was t- 2D. And I'm not much of an animate animator. I tell people, they're like, oh, I want to go into animation. Well, there's probably at least 20, 25, 30 different jobs on an animation assembly line. And people are like, really? It's like, yeah, the, the, from the writing to the voice acting, to the lip syncing and the acting, to a storyboarding and then designing, uh, uh, you know, characters, backgrounds and props that a whole layout team and a director and an assistant director are using for weeks and weeks and weeks, putting each episode together. And then a color department and a sound and editing department. And um, I'm, I know I'm forgetting some stuff, but there really is, there's a lot of different jobs that goes into pulling off um, any kind of animation. It's a team effort, really. You know, if you're doing a little independent thing that's maybe 30 seconds or a minute and a half at college, you know, one of my roommates, he did something that was like 90 seconds. I mean, it took him well over a year and he had a little bit of help. I helped paint the backgrounds for that and stuff. So um, it's so much of a team effort and working with a lot of different people. So how was it you graduate from RISD and then you're looking for a job and then it's like, I want to pack my bags and head to California. Like, is that? Sort that, of. Uh, it's, yeah. I, 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 I always said to myself, especially come junior and senior year, I need to get a job before I have a diploma. I'm like, I'm not moving home with my parents. They're great. But I, that, that wasn't an option. I, I really felt that uh, I wanted I wanted to do something, and um, we had a great illustration department. A lot of talented people at RISD that encouraged us, and people came in from like you know Hallmark and American Greetings and book companies, kids book companies, things like that. And um, that actually went really well too. I had super quick. Um, American Greetings wanted to buy one of my lines and was interested in hiring me. And about two weeks after I landed the job with The Simpsons, I did get a call from Hallmark. They loved my, uh, the comedy stuff. Hallmark had the rights to like Charlie Brown and Peanuts and Garfield and things like that, that I could draw. I think I had a whole bunch of cartoons and things that I loved drawing. And they were interested in hiring me and I thanked them and I told them I got a job on the animated show of The Simpsons. I didn't even know if they'd heard of it, but I digress because The Simpsons came on in December of 89, just before Christmas break. And we had a VCR and we recorded it and it, it blew me away. It blew everybody away. Uh, you know, we were kind of hoping it would be okay because you just you just don't know. Animation really hadn't been going on. The old Saturday morning stuff was getting kind of bad in the 80s and it was going away. But The Simpsons, when I first saw it, it had a spark of all the great television shows and things that I grew up watching. Um, like I said, I loved drama and comedy. I loved the emotion. I loved the, the chemistry of characters, even if it was live action, like like um, MASH, All in the Family, things that I would sit as a kid and watch with 
all different ages and my grandparents and aunts and uncles and younger kids. And it just blew me away. It, like that kind of writing, that kind of camaraderie. And I, with The Simpsons, um, I felt like, wow, that's a crazy, dysfunctional, weird little family, but it had heart. Like they still loved each other, like Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners. You can scream and yell all you want for 25 minutes, but they kiss at the end and you can't wait to watch next week. Right. You know, that was, that's like the magic in putting that stuff together. And I, I felt, I'm like, okay, well, that's one episode. They did 13. We came back in January and I believe it was, uh, was it Bart the Genius? Which one was it? I forget if it was Bart the Genius where he, where he cheats on a test. And, and then there were the others. And then we watched that one and recorded it. And I made sure to record the credits because I wanted to see who was doing this. And uh, we didn't have the internet at the time. So that was the only way for me to get the information. So anyway, um, after the third or fourth episode and they were all great, I'm like, I could do this. It's a simple style, but it's, got a, it's different. And I could really do this. I, I love designing backgrounds and sets and creating things like that. Um, and so, and it really quickly, went through the credits and saw who did what production manager, the studio in Hollywood at the time, Klasky Chupo, who would end up creating um, Rugrats, the Wild Thornberries, things like that. So I contacted the production lady there, um, Pamela Clybring Thompson, who I'm still in touch with, and she was fantastic. To make a long story short, they said, I found out on Entertainment Tonight that they picked up a second season and they were gonna do at least 24 episodes and I'm like, that's it, this show's great. This, I really believe that this show has that chemistry and those elements that it could absolutely go five years and a hundred episodes. I believe that, truly. I, I, people joked about it when I showed up there, but I said, no. And then when we got picked up for a third, fourth and fifth season, they were popping the champagne and stuff. I mean, most people in animation weren't experiencing stuff like that back in 1990, 91. And they're like, oh, you were right, you're right. I'm like, hey, it's a great show, this is fun. You know, these are great characters. The voice actors are great and the writing is fantastic. And that gives the foundation for the animators to do something great with that. And um, so anyway, she sent me the tests. I failed all four, so to speak. And I didn't know what I was doing. I, that's what it was. And I, she called and I, within about, I was, I felt my heart sink. And about two seconds later, I called her back and I said, look, um, I know I can do this. I love doing buildings, architecture. I know perspective, creating like the world they live in, the stores, the church, Moe's Bar. I can do that. I love doing that. And um, so she said, tell you what, Lance. I said, can you tell me what they liked and what they didn't, the directors? And she said, okay. You know, I was being persistent, but not pushy and not rude. It was that fine line that Pam has often said, like you did it just right. And of course I didn't know what I was doing, but um, anyway, she FedExed me a, a background layout test and a background design test. And in a nutshell, they asked me to design the break room for the power plant and the double decker Springfield Mall. And I did those two. And um, I had it all ready to go to FedEx the next morning. I did all this in about 36 hours or something. I told her I'd do it quickly. And I just, I felt, I kind of had this weird dream, like, you know, just like Lance, do an extra background that shows you really know perspective. You really know how to draw. You know the style of the show. I could watch the videos. I could see how the power plant looked. I decided to come up with this three point perspective looking up the stairs and all the uh, pipes and things like that in the power plant. And so I did one more the next morning. I did it, put it all together and I sent it to her and I told her it was coming and Gosh, it wasn't more than two days later. She called back and said, uh, Lance, you're in. When can you start? And I said, what? And she said, yeah, not only did you follow the director's um, direction, what they told you to do and what they told you not to do, you did it perfectly. And you added this extra design that shows clearly you know how to draw and you know the style of the show. And I said, well, I graduate like June 1st or 2nd. I need a few days. But the first week of June, I'll pack okay. a bag and go out there. I'll have to find a place to live, but I'll go out there. So I did, I went to the, the new invention at the time was the fax machine. And so I filled out some paperwork to lock it in. I had to make sure 
Um, and when I got there, I finished the other paperwork back the first day I showed up. But, um, but that was it. And I called my parents and I told my advisor in the illustration department. And I guess word kind of, you know, went like wildfire. And I'm like, well, I had just turned 22. So I guess it was like probably the second week of May. So I'm like, well, two or three weeks till graduation. And I've got a, a job ready to go the beginning of June in Hollywood doing this little animated show that a lot of people had not even heard of. A lot of people didn't even know what I was talking about. This <laughs> Exactly. It's weird, but it's true. So professional, professionally, I mean, obviously there's highlights. So there's a couple of highlights in, in your career. One, getting into the Chelmsford High ha Hall of Fame. I mean, it had to have been a great thing. How does that compare to all the Emmys though in, in fulfilling the dream that you, you really had and, and, yeah. and still there and still, and what, how many, how many, how many years have we yet now? We, on The Simpsons, we're, um, in June, it will be 32 years for me, 33 seasons. Um, okay. We will be started. Matter of fact, we're getting the scripts in for season 34. They've started recording the first couple shows. So um, probably in the next few weeks, we'll start season 34. That's all we're signed through. But the ratings are great. The reviews are great. The scripts are great. And Disney Plus is loving it because, um, yeah, people are watching. Again, the numbers are up. The new shows are fantastic. My kids and their friends like the new shows. Right. Yeah. So is it Emmy versus the Hall of Fame though? I mean, can you tell? <laughs> uh, the, being in, and it's funny, I have my little, I got this, they sent my phone yep. side. Um, it meant a tremendous amount to me. Uh, it was in 2007 and I really, I was blown away. I, I was, I just, I, I mean, I remember going, in, I was in with like Coach Cato and Randy Whitehead, who was my, PE teacher through Byam school, grade school. And so there's a little, like a whole history of my life there in school and all these people, Mr. Hoover showed up and a, a, a lot of people I hadn't seen in a long time. And my grandmother had just passed away a couple days before and I had flown in for that. And it was extremely meaningful. I, I felt like, wow, so many people through the years at Chelmsford High School and uh, I guess, you know, you guys are caring about this cartoon show that I'm part of and enjoying it and recognizing it. And that was really humbling. I mean, the Emmy Awards are great. That's sort of, that's, you know, that's a whole team of us, you know, having best animated show. And there's a lot of, so many great shows out there. That's meaningful as far as The Simpsons goes and my professional, you know, doing you know, out here where I have a lot of friends working on Family Guy and things like that. By the way, you can see I'm working. We over two years, I'm I've got the whole setup here. So we're somehow doing these shows the last two years from home. Um, all the shows are. One of the head producers for King, uh, excuse me, Family Guy is about ten houses up from here <laughs> on my street. So we kind of joke about that. So um, here in Burbank, but um, yeah, being elected, you know, into the Chelmsford, you know, Alumni Hall of Fame is very meaningful it's one of the highlights really of my life. It's very humbling. Yeah. You know, I love Chelmsford. I love it. I miss it. I have family and friends there. And, um, you know, that has never changed. And Chelmsford itself, from the beginning, I have to say, that's what I know. So that's what I brought to the Simpsons. That's what I brought to Springfield. There are different designers um, that, that brought different things, but I just felt like Chelmsford was my Springfield. Similar, yeah. different, but similar in a lot of ways. Um, a little bit influenced by Oregon, where creator Mac Raining was from. So there's a little bit of that element. But Springfield is kind of everywhere USA, too. There's all these little elements, little bits of New York and Washington and things. But I brought, I brought a lot of, you know, Chelmsford, literally brought a lot of it into the designs. And, and still, I still try to. We've done so many designs. But, um, you know, from the Skip Steiner to the old, the Adams Chelmsford Public Library was the inspiration for Springfield Town Hall. And then we popped you know, Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's Monticello from Charlottesville on the Chelmsford Public Library. That's the Springfield Town Hall. I know a lot of people know that, but I came up with it and they're like, that's great. Let's do that. You know, so. It's, it's wonderful that your two worlds kind of collided though. You know what I mean? And, and that you can, you can do that on a regular basis and, and still bring your your Chelmsford roots all the way out to, you know, 3,000 miles to, to, yeah. to California. And speaking of Chelmsford, I, I, yeah. I'm always, if we're doing the school, I remember McCarthy Junior High Middle School. I remember the high school. 
I remember these things and what they looked like and how it was being in school when I'm coming up with this stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I could talk to you all day, except for the show has to end. And I know you have to get back to work because it's, it's three hours behind right now. So, um, but I do um, hope we'll more people, if you still have more um, of the poster behind me uh, for yeah. sale, hopefully that, that we can do that. And I just truly enjoy the fact that you want to continue to give back. And, and I think hopefully today's story will inspire other artists through through Chelmsford or anywhere that, you know, you follow your passion, you do it right, um, that, that success will follow. So I, I congratulate to you. Um, um, and it's been wonderful. So I'd like to say thank you on behalf of Where Are They Now? And um, take care. And I'll continue to be watching The Simpsons. Okay. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you for asking me. Okay.